My name is Wendy West. I'm with the University of California Cooperative Extension. And uh, along with me today is Scott Arnetto, also with UC Cooperative Extension, and Leanne Mila with the El Dorado County Department of Agriculture. So transitioning a little bit, um, the, uh, the control methods that I'm going to talk about um, are cultural control, mechanical control, and biological control. Um, another thing that we'd like you to go away from today is looking at these different control techniques and knowing that integrated pest management is really a good option with yellow star thistle. Meaning, combining um, a variety of these control methods depending on how large your infestation is, um, the, your topography, the use of your land, could be really advantageous in getting it controlled on your property. So all of these methods can be combined together depending on your situation to give you good results. Um, and we'll be talking about some of the combinations that can be really valuable. So um, cultural control, um, such as grazing, grazing can work, but the timing of when um, the yellow star thistle is grazed um, and the behavior of the animals are the two really critical elements. So it's best to time it when the plants are most vulnerable to damage, meaning the best time to graze and graze hard on yellow star thistle is at that bolting stage. And the reason that is, is because when the cattle or other herbivore um, uh, munches that down, that plant will not have the energy to grow again that year and to produce seed. So the key time to get in there and graze it, and graze it hard, which we're going to talk, talk about in a moment, is at that bolting stage. So the other thing is, is to control the behavior of the animals by really uh, intensely grazing sections so that uh, it's time controlled and, and it minimizes their ability to avoid the star thistle. Um, star thistle has a fairly decent protein content, so it can't, you know, it, it can be okay for the um, certainly cattle, goats, and sheep to eat. Um, but obviously it has to be before it's spiny because they won't like it much then. Um, but you want them to get in there hard and graze it um, hard so that you can have an impact on, on its ability to regenerate. And of course overgrazing can encourage yellow star thistle because you're a bare ground situation just giving the star thistle really a better chance of germinating those seeds that are laying there. Prescribed burning um, can work also, but again, timing and temperature are really critical. Um, the, the, again, the timing needs to be um, just as it's at that bolting stage, again, so if uh, you get it burned off, it won't be able to regenerate that year. But the challenge is, um, that timing also means that generally the other grasses around it are nice and golden and crispy and brown, which is a hard time to um, have a prescribed fire unless you have a professional there to, um, to burn on your property. So um, you really need it to be at that bolting stage because you can have lots of grasses to carry a good hot fire because it does need to be a hot fire in order to kill the seed that's laying there. If you have too cool of a fire, you're just going to actually encourage yellow star thistle to uh, all the seeds that are laying there to germinate because it's their time. So uh, prescribed burning can work, but it is very challenging. One of the uh, combinations that, uh, as I talked about in integrated pest management that can work, is that it, it, studies have shown if you go in and do a burn at a, if you go in and do a burn and it, um, at, earlier where it actually causes a lot of germination, then you can get a lot germinating and then come back in with herbicide right afterwards and uh, treat it that way so that you uh, get maximum germinating plants controlled with the herbicide. So burning can, in combination with herbicide can be useful. Revegetation, of course, uh, making sure that you uh, try to outcompete the yellow star thistle wherever you can. Uh, broadcast seeding, drill seeding, and of course in our dryland situations, seeding in the fall uh, before those winter rains start. So anything you can do if you have a disturbed area, say you're putting in a new road in your property. Um, if you can get some revegetation and some mulching in there, 
to uh, shade out the yellow scar thistle, that can be really important part of your planning of a project. Um, mowing is another uh, mechanical control method. Uh, it, again, uh, this process can work, but timing is critical. So again, it's best to bolt, um, I'm sorry, to uh, mow at that late bolting stage, right at the spiny or early flower, before you're seeing much yellow, because you cut that plant off, it doesn't have the energy to regenerate that year, because it's already used up all its stores to get that, that stem up. So um, it, it, you can get about 90% control with two well-timed mowings per year over three years. One of the problems with yellow star thistle also is, as you've probably seen on your properties, is if we have a, a rain and then we have a late season rain, um, it'll just keep, more plants will keep germinating. So the challenge is, is if you are mowing, you may have to do it several times because you may have some that are germinating later in the year if we have um, spring, late spring and summer rains. So with mowing, the growth form is very um, critical it, to make it the most effective. The best growth form is uh, that uh, picture to your right where it's very tall and lanky. It's actually been growing up within grasses. So that's the best, most effective uh, growth form for a mowing regime because it's tall and lanky. You cut it off. It doesn't have a lot of leaf structure in order to do any regrowing as opposed to the plant on the left that has lots of leaf structure below. You cut that off, there's a chance that it could um, get enough energy together with that leaf structure um, to regrow that year. So the best growth form is that tall, lanky form on the right-hand side. So how many people have pincushion effect because you mowed it way too early and all it does is end up really, really short with lots and lots of seeds? Yeah, I know. I've done it. We've all done it. So that's the picture on the left-hand side. Um, again, if you don't wait until that bolting stage, uh, it will have the energy to grow again that year, set seed only about this tall, and then you definitely won't be able to mow it. <coughs> Hand pulling can work. Again, avoiding seed production is the most important thing. You can dispose of the plants if seed, if there's any yellow flower, you should bag those plants and put them in a disposal if you know that it's going to a landfill where it's going to be buried um, deeply. Or um, you can uh, burn it at a very high temperature um, and once it's dried out. If, it, if there isn't any yellow yet, you can just pull it, if it's a molting stage, you can just pull it and lay it on the ground. So that can be really effective with small populations or really isolated, uh, isolated infest, uh, infestations. Biological control, um, these are where we bring the natural enemies of the plant from its original habitat, um, Turkey, Greece in this case. It doesn't get out of control there because the natural enemies are located over there where it originated. So USDA and uh, California Department of Food and Agriculture work to find those natural pests, do extensive testing, and then bring those pests uh, to try to control uh, various uh, pests, weed pests here in California. We have two that are very um, well distributed around the county, uh, a hairy weevil and a false peacock fly. They actually lay their eggs in um, the seed head and the larvae eat the seed, so it reduces seed by about 50%. But as you can probably guess, that's not probably going to ever control yellow star thistle in California with just that kind of a seed reduction. So we're constantly working to bring new biological control methods in um, to maybe at some point have enough attack to the plants that uh, we can see a reduction. But it is, it is out there and it Certainly not hurting. We hope for the silver bullet that it will help a lot. So as you can see, there's uh, definite reductions in uh, percent of seed production. So that concludes that segment uh, on the mechanical um, and biological controls and cultural.